Good morning. Please stand for the invocation which will be offered by Bishop Donald Jackson. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Most holy, wise, and everlasting Father, creator of heaven and earth and all things therein, we thank you, almighty God, first, for our early rise this morning, being in our right mind, having the activity and the use of our limbs and a reasonable portion of health. We thank you, Lord, for traveling mercy those that traveled near and afar. Father, as we enter into this celebration to congratulate and celebrate these that have persevered and have accomplished this milestone, we give you thanks because without you we can do nothing. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us to an, through another academic year. We ask that you bless us this day. Keep your angels of mercy watching over us and protecting us. Now, Lord, we thank you for those who have played their part in helping these accomplish this mission. Firstly, we thank you for our president. We ask you to continue to bless him as you continue to lead this great university. Bless our board of trustees, Father, and all the platform party. And oh God, remember our illustrious faculty who has empowered these with the wealth that they have and poured it out to these graduates. We pray blessings upon them. Bless the families, the friends that came near and afar, oh God, to celebrate with them. And now, Lord, these that are graduating, as they prepare to embrace the platform and receive their degrees, we ask that you pave a way, open a door of opportunity as they take this next step in life. Bless them, bless their hands, the work of their hands, that they might be able to make this community a better place. And now, Lord, lastly, if there be any that are under the sound of my voice, that have pressed their way here today and may be afflicted with some pain or sickness or misery, we ask that you send a spirit of healing that they will not leave the same way they came. These blessings we ask in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.
Before we begin, I would like to call your attention to the commencement ceremony etiquette requests listed in your program. And also, once the degrees have been awarded, the audience will please remain seated until the graduates have recessed. Thank you for your cooperation. Welcome to our spring commencement. The academic, academic procession was led by the bearer of the faculty mace. The faculty mace leads the academic procession at commencement and on other special ceremonial occasions. The mace is carried today by Dr. Ben Kyer, Professor of Economics, a distinguished senior member of the faculty. With us this morning, we have some special guests whom I wish to recognize at this time. To begin, I would like to present the First Lady of Francis Marion University, Mrs. Folly Carter. Mrs. Carter, will you please stand? Also seated with Mrs. Carter are Mrs. Annie King, members of the Sullen family, members of the Lee family, and guests of the platform party. As most of us are aware, the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion is made up of men and women from throughout the state who give up their time generously and without compensation. It is our pleasure to welcome some of those members to the commencement platform today. I will ask each to stand when introduced and to remain standing until all have been presented. Chair of the Board of Trustees, Robert E. Lee, Class of 87, Marion. Trustee H. Paul Dove, Jr., Winsborough. Trustee H. Randall Dozier, Class of 77, Murrells Inlet. Trustee R. Tracy Freeman, Class of 92, North Augusta. Trustee Patricia C. Hartung, Greenville. Trustee L. Floyd L. Keels, 2012 Honorary Doctor of Humanities degree recipient, Lake City. Trustee Kenneth W. Jackson, Class of 84, Florence. Trustee Stephen N. Jones, Class of 88, Hartsville. Trustee Karen A. Leatherman, Class of 80, Florence. Trustee George C. McIntyre, Class of 78, Bennettsville. Trustee Mark S. Moore, Mount Pleasant. We appreciate your leadership and being with us today. The administrative offices comprised of the vice presidents are also seated on stage and I shall ask each to stand when introduced. Mr. Darrell L. Bridges, Executive Vice President. Dr. Christopher Kennedy, Vice President for Student Life. Mrs. Lauren Stanton, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Dr. Charlene Wages, Vice President for Administration. And Dr. Alyssa Waters, Vice President of Enrollment Management. Also seated on stage, and I shall each to ask each to stand when introduced, Bishop Donald Jackson, Dr. Sharon O'Kelly, Chair of the Faculty, Dr. John Tuttle, Director of Honours Program, Dr. Will Carswell, Associate Provost and Director of Graduate Programs, Ms. Alison Stedman, Associate Provost, Mr. Timothy Norwood, FMU Education Board Member, Mrs. Anne Williams, Registrar, and Mr. Stephen Sims, Professor and Librarian. And now, it is my privilege to present the President of Francis Marion University, Dr. Luther F. Carter. Thank you, Ms. Provost. Good morning. Welcome to commencement. This is the most important event on the university's calendar, and we've got a beautiful spring day to celebrate it today. 
Permit me to begin by making one additional recognition before we begin. Our provost, Peter King, will retire this summer, and we'll discuss his service a little later in the ceremony. But I do want to recognize his spouse, Annie King, who has represented this university with grace, dignity, and charm on a great many occasions over the years. Annie, would you stand up and allow us to express our recognition? Now let me begin by providing a profile of this year's class. There are 356 graduating today. There are 273 undergraduates and 83 graduate students. Among the undergraduates, 76 will graduate with Latin honors and eight with university honors, 84 in all, almost a quarter of the class. The average age of this class is 25 years old. The youngest graduate is 20. The oldest graduate is 65. You know, every graduation, every graduation, I'm pleased to note the large number of in-state students that we graduate, and today's no exception. 91% of our graduates this morning are South Carolinians, ensuring that FMU remains one of the best investments in South Carolina higher education. Before we begin the formal ceremonies, I do want you to take a second, and I want you to look around the auditorium. Look around. Look at the smiles on the faces of the graduates, Look at the pride that's so evident among families and friends. Graduation is a big deal. I've never understood those who feel they don't need to attend the ceremony, that they'll get their degree anyway. They will, of course, but they'll never experience this moment. Attending a commencement is one of life's rare experiences. It's a culmination of years of hard work, and it symbolizes success like few other events. The ceremony itself is historic and ritualistic, but what you'll remember most about today are the strong and spontaneous emotions evidenced by graduates and family alike. I remember my mother's tears at my college graduation. And decades later, it's what I recall about that graduation most vividly, that that degree meant as much to her and the rest of my family as it did to me. There are many family members here today that share that same sentiment. Let me tell you something else. When you graduates walk across that stage, every eye and this auditorium will follow you. And everyone here will share in your success. For those 30 seconds, each one of you belongs to hundreds of proud parents and friends throughout this crowd because they respect and appreciate what it took for you to get here. But don't think about that as you cross the stage. I don't want you to be intimidated I just want you to be proud. From my perspective, this is quite simply the best day of the year. I get to congratulate each of you and hand you that precious piece of parchment. In truth, I should be paying the university for this privilege. But let me not dwell on that. The trustees might take me up on it. In a few short minutes, you're going to be holding that baccalaureate, master's, or doctoral diploma. Remember this, that degree is yours forever. It's a part of your academic pedigree. It will define you scholastically, and it will always identify you as a person who values intellectual development. Of course, that isn't the only byproduct of your collegiate education. 
And understanding of other people is right at the top of that list, too. During the past few years, you've explored concepts and ideas and beliefs that were new and different. You've embraced some, you've rejected many, and you've probably been an ambivalent to most. But all have contributed to developing a better understanding of other viewpoints, other cultures, and other people. You know, there's a lot of clamor out there these days about what universities should or shouldn't teach. There are folks who would prefer that we homogenize your, your learning process by controlling the literature you read, the topics you discuss, and even the voices of our faculty. But that won't occur here. Our faculty is independent, strong-willed, and free to teach whatever they deem appropriate. And I want everybody in this auditorium to fully understand how much a good education benefits from having a faculty willing and able to speak its mind. This knowledge will serve you so well in the years ahead as you battle ignorance and superstition and as you push against the walls that other people want to construct around you. It will also serve you well in arguing for fairness and equity and the treatment of others, especially those who don't have benefit of the education and advantages that you do. After all, what's the point in getting an education if you can't put it to use in helping other people? Above all, remember this. This country has never been defined by our similarities, but rather by a willingness to accept and embrace our differences. Now let me close with a brief word of thanks. Today marks the final graduation ceremony for four members of this faculty prior to their formal retirement. I would like to recognize them by asking them to stand as I call their names. Please hold your applause until they are all recognized. Sophia Waymires, Assistant Professor of Mathematics, 18 years of service. George Buck Sniven, Professor of Mathematics, 39 years of service. Kay Packett, Associate Professor of Mass Communications, 10 years of service. Peter King, Professor of Biology and Provost of the University, 27 years of service. Ladies and gentlemen, these colleagues have a combined 94 years of teaching, research, and service at this university all devoted to the education of your students and my students. Would you join me in thanking them? Good luck and Godspeed. It is my pleasure now to introduce Mr. Timothy Norwood Sr. to present our premier academic award on behalf of the Francis Marion University Education Foundation. Mr. Norwood. Good morning. Uh, will all the recipients of the William H. Blackwell Award join me on stage? The William H. Blackwell Award, named in memory of the founding chairman of the Francis Marion University Foundation, is given by the foundation to the student or students who exemplify excellence in scholarship, 
and who have attained in all academic work the highest academic achievement among those receiving baccalaureate degrees. Although all baccalaureate degree recipients during the year are eligible for consideration, this award is presented only at the spring commencement ceremony. Today, I'm pleased to present eight graduates with the William H. Blackwell Award. Please come forward when I call your name. Brianna Cheyenne Bradley. Sarah Rose Driggers, Malden, South Carolina, majored in elementary education. Angelina Sheila Catherine J. Pernum from Marion, South Carolina, majored in biology. Stephen McKenzie Joseph, Joseph Josie from Darlington, South Carolina, a December graduate, majored in psychology. Caroline Lee McClam, Florence, South Carolina, majored in early childhood education. <laughs> Abby Elizabeth McLean from Coward, South Carolina, majored in elementary education. Ada Reed Smolin Morton from Florence, South Carolina, majored in visual arts ceramics. And Whitley Autumn Turner, Florence, South Carolina, majored in elementary education. Congratulations on this wonderful achievement. Thank you. It is the prerogative of the institution to propose to its governing board candidates for honorary degrees. Since the founding of Francis Marion in 1970, the university has been privileged to recognize a number of outstanding leaders through conferral of honorary doctoral degrees. Today, we have the pleasure of presenting three such candidates. At this time, I shall ask that Mrs. Patricia Hartung and Ms. Karen Leatherman, members of the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion University, come forward to escort Mrs. Linda Sullen to the front of the platform. I shall also ask that Mr. Stephen Sims, Access Services Librarian and Associate Professor for Francis Marion University, come forward to assist in the ceremony. I wish to recognize Mr. Sims, who will read the citation. Mr. Sims. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Francis Marion University, I present Linda McDonald Sullivan for the honorary degree of Doctor of Humanities. Linda McDonald Sullivan, you have dedicated your professional life to Francis Marion University and the people of South Carolina. Over the past 46 years, you have held a variety of positions at the university, including appointments in the library, the registrar's office, and most recently, payroll office. As the Veteran Affairs Coordinator, you have many of our most deserving citizens realize the dream of a college education. As a founding member and former president of the African American Faculty and Staff Coalition of Francis Marion, you have helped generations of students feel valued and welcomed on our campus. 
You have also bolstered the university's efforts to diversify the faculty and staff. Your vital work has helped the university more accurately reflect the richness of our region and state. More recently, you have played an instrumental role in supporting numerous diversity initiatives at the university and in the community, which have brought much needed attention to our region's history and culture and provided important opportunities for students to engage in research and service opportunities. Your accomplishments have been widely recognized. You received the Francis Marion University Staff Service Award in 2017, the Marvin Lynch Humanitarian Award in 2020, and the University Endowed Scholarship in your name in 2021. Linda McDonald Sullen, you have had a shaping influence on our university and community. Your dedication to our fellow citizens is laudable, and we are the beneficiaries of your remarkable career of service. Francis Marion University is honored to recognize and celebrate your many achievements. Mr. President, I present Linda McDonald Sullen for the degree of Doctor of Humanities. Linda Sullen, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humanities. Congratulations. It is my pleasure to call on Mr. Tracy Freeman and Mr. Mark Moore, members of the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion University, to escort Dr. Peter King to the front of the platform. And I shall also ask that Dr. Christopher Kennedy, Vice President for Student Life, to come forward to assist in the ceremony. I wish to recognize Dr. Kennedy, who will read the citation. Dr. Kennedy. Good morning. On behalf of the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion University, I present Peter King for the honorary degree of Doctor of Humanities. Dr. Peter King, you have faithfully served the faculty, staff, and students of Francis Marion University and the people of South Carolina. Your numerous publications and presentations have advanced understandings of the natural world and the delicate balances necessary to sustain ecosystems. Equally important, you have helped generations of students become informed, responsible citizens, and thoughtful stewards of the resources upon which we all depend. As provost, you have been an inspiring mentor for hundreds of faculty members and administrators. With gentle guidance and firm principles, you have helped others recognize potential, find direction, and realize dreams. Under your leadership, the university has expanded its mission, developed pioneering academic programs, and secured resources to support research and travel for faculty and students alike. Your work has extended beyond the campus and has demonstrated laudable commitments to those most in need. During the past 27 years, you have served the region in various capacities, including volunteer roles as emergency medical technician and guardian at Lytham. Dr. Peter King, you have had a shaping influence on higher education in South Carolina, and your work has improved the lives of thousands of people throughout our state. For your tireless devotion to the people of South Carolina, you have recently received the state's highest civilian honor, the Order of the Palmetto. The entire Francis Marion community has benefited from your leadership, sound judgment, and commitment to the university and its educational mission. Francis Marion University is honored to recognize and celebrate your many ac accomplishments and achievements. Mr. President, I present Peter King for the degree of Doctor of Humanities. Mr. Provost, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humanities. Congratulations.
It is my pleasure to call on Mr. Ken Jackson and Mr. George McIntyre, members of the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion University, to escort Mr. Robert E. Lee to the front of the platform. And I shall also ask that Dr. H. Randall Dozier, Vice President of the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion University, to come forward to assist in the ceremony. I wish to recognize Dr. Dozier, who will read the citation. Dr. Dozier. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of the Board of Trustees for Francis Marion University, I present Robert E. Lee for the honorary degree of Doctor of Humanities. Robert E. Lee, you have dedicated your life to serving your fellow citizens. Working as a self-described country lawyer, you have advanced the causes of justice and fairness within your hometown of Marion and across the PD region. You have long served your alma mater, Francis Marion University, as a member of the Board of Trustees for 25 years, including nine years as chair. You have played valuable roles in a time of unprecedented growth. During the COVID-19 period, you led the board, of, board with decisiveness and determination in protecting the university and safeguarding its faculty, staff, and students. You have helped the university expand its mission, beautify its campus, and provide increased opportunities for generations of students. Equally important, you have supported the essential principles of shared governance and academic freedom. As a member of the Francis Marion University Foundation, you have raised scholarship funds that have allowed deserving students to fulfill their educational goals. You also have served on the paralegal board for Florence Starling Technical College and the board of managers of the South Carolina Historical Society. Your many accomplishments have been widely recognized. In 1998, you received the President's Award from the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. In 2022, you received the Alumni Award from Francis Marion University. Robert E. Lee, we have all benefited from your remarkable life of service. It's a great privilege for Francis Marion University to honor your many achievements. I just want to say he's not through either. Uh, he's got a lot more work to do. Mr. President, I present Mr. Robert E. Lee for the degree of Doctor of Humanities. Mr. Chairman, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humanities. Congratulations. Thank you for that introduction. Good morning, my name is Robert E. Lee. Before I begin my speech in earnest, what I, I'm, I wanna say something to the graduates, and this is just for you. If you noticed when the, all the trustees were introduced, the class years of those of us who've graduated from Francis Marion was given. And there's a reason for that. That is a subliminal message to each of you. You see, and I'll teach you a little bit of law here. A trust is a, English, a creation of English law, whereby a document's created that something valuable is held. And the people who hold that valuable item, whether it's money, land, or some jewel, are called trustees. And those of us who are trustees are, in, are, are given this sacred trust, which is Francis Marion, to protect and guide into the future. And the reason our class years are given and that message is sent to you is because in 1987, I sat where you do. And I never thought that in 12 years, I would be up here doing this. You don't know where your path will lead you, but I hope sitting here today among you are future trustees. And that you too, like us, will accept from those of us who are trustees now, the sacred trust we've been imposed and given to by the legislature of this great state. The next thing I'm gonna tell you is, um, when I was asked to do this, I, 
I thought it'd be just like doing a, an argument in court. It's really much more than that. I, I got online and I, I searched Google like we all do. And I, I found on Google that there were topics you had, an, an order you're supposed to go in. So I'm going to follow some of that. But more than that, I found where they would actually have someone who'd write my speech for me. And that was right above the term papers that you could get. So, you know, that's available for, for people in the future. But in trying to decide what to say, I talked to several people. My father, who's a minister, said, don't make it longer than 15 minutes. Nobody listens after that. Uh, and others said, you know, make it shorter. And I talked to a friend of mine, Morgan Martin, who's given this speech. And he said that giving a commencement address is like the story of the little boy and the preacher. And the little boy was going down the road, he was pushing a lawnmower, and he came up on the preacher who had a bicycle. And the preacher needed to cut his grass, and the little boy wanted to ride the bike, so they decided to trade. And as they, the little boy rode around the neighborhood, he decided he would go back and check on the preacher. And the preacher got there and he said, son, I think your lawnmower's broken. And the little boy asked him, why do you say that? He said, well, it won't start. He said, I keep pulling, it won't start. He said, well, preacher, if you want to start, you've got to cuss at it. And he, the preacher said, I don't do that. I'm a preacher. I've forgotten those words. And the little boy said, well, keep pulling. They'll all come back to you. <laughs> so I'm going to start. And hopefully, whatever I, the, the great thoughts I had will all come back to me. But fellow trustees, Dr. Carter, senior staff, members of the faculty, Ladies and gentlemen, most of all you, the graduates, I'm pleased to be here and join you on what is in, on this university's calendar, one of the most important, if not the most important day. When I graduated from Francis Mary in 1987, my parents were in Ivory Coast in West Africa, serving as medical missionaries. They were not able to attend my graduation. Now, 36 years later, I thank you very deeply for allowing them to see me receive a diploma from this great university. I want to congratulate the class of 2003. You should be very proud of this accomplishment. I know you can't wait to walk across this stage and get your diplomas and head out into the world. To the families of the graduates, I congratulate you as well. Your support through this process has made enormous impact. I know you're very proud of your graduates as they move forward with the next step in their lives. I also realize that by securing a college degree, each of your graduates have not only impacted their lives, but have impacted the lives of your entire family. Before I begin, I would like to make an observation about our faculty. During the program after you receive your award, the provost will address you and ask you to stand, face the faculty, and thank them, and he will use to say these words, a university is only as strong as its faculty. I've never agreed with that. I believe the faculty is the university. I don't remember who gave my commencement address. I don't remember the administration, but I remember every member of the faculty who taught me. They were here for you, and they mentored you as a student. They will be here for you at, once you graduate. Other than your families, no one will cheer more for your success than they will. Graduation is one of those steps in life that defines a coming of age and moving to a new stage in life. Some of you know exactly what you're going to do. Some of you think you know what you're going to do. Some of y'all are just glad to be here today. <laughs> Regardless, the next step of your life will, it, will be exciting. It will be trying, but above all, the next phase of your life will depend on you your, and your determination. Now, according to my internet search on Google, it is at this point in the address I'm supposed to give you some good advice. I don't know, maybe I was supposed to, thought I would give you bad advice, but I'm supposed to give you good advice. And so when I was recently fishing in the Sudan, I decided and was thinking about this graduation. And I decided I would talk to you about love and its reward. But in order to do that, I need to tell you, to, 
two items of information, and I need to, uh, then I'll tell you a story. First of all, I need to tell you about the people with, who, with whom I grew up in West Africa, where my parents were missionaries for 27 years. According to their oral tradition, the Lobi tribe originated in Chad in Central Africa, where they farmed. Because many of the tribe were being captured and sold into slavery, they decided to migrate from Chad down into Ghana. In Ghana, they found that the slave trade was actually worse. There it had been, uh, than it had been in the Chad, and so they vowed never to be sold into slavery again. They crossed the Black Volta River, in, River into Upper Volta, which was it's currently known as Burkina Faso, and they have ne were never sold into slavery again. In fact, they were the last tribe conquered by the French when the French were colonizing West Africa. They generally live now in the northern, northeast part of the Ivory Coast, the southern part of Burkina Faso, and the northwest part of Ghana. They are also generally farmers. Now, the next part thing I need to tell you about is a hero, one of the heroes of my life, who is my father, Sherwood Lee. My father is from the Bethnic community near Cusack's Crossroads in Lower Florence County, which is near the settlement of Atlanta. My father is one of six children. My grandfather, his father, had a grammar school education, and my grandmother, his mother, had a seventh grade education. My father knew from a very early age that he was going to be a missionary. He entered college in Nashville, Tennessee, where he met and met, married my mother, which was one of the best decisions in his life and mine when, he, when they got married. My father graduated from college, and he, like many of you, was the first person in his family to ever get a college degree. After two years in the pastorate in Coward, my parents were off to Africa. At that point in their lives, my parents had never been outside the United States. So after a year in Switzerland learning French, which is the national language in Ivory Coast, my father in his early 30s, my mother in her late 20s, and their five-year-old son arrived in the Ivory Coast. We lived in a town called Doropo in the northeast corner where the medical clinic was located and began to live and work there with the Lobi people. To get to the station where we live, we had to drive 16 hours to the capital. We had electricity three hours a day. To get mail, it took us a two-hour drive, and a letter from the United States from here in South Carolina took two and a half to three weeks to arrive. My father decided that he didn't want to talk through a translator, so he decided to learn the Lobi language, and in two years learned two new languages. He began to work in the medical center and received his nurse practitioner's license from the Minister of Health for the Ivory Coast. By the time of his retirement from the mission field, he and a staff of five nurses were providing primary care to at least 100 Africans daily. Now, let me talk to you about the story I'd like to share. I would like for you to imagine that during the COVID pandemic in Florence, Marion, Darlington, Chesterfield, Dillon, Williamsburg, and Williamsburg counties, instead of sending medical supplies for the sick with COVID and vaccines for those without, the governor had instead sent the National Guard to seal off these counties and let the pandemic run its course because those living in these counties were expendable. In 1985, when I was a student here at Francis Marion, that's exactly what happened in the Northeast region of the Ivory Coast, where my parents were working and working with the Lobi people. Meningitis epidemic broke out. There was no Dr. Fauci. There was no HHS. There was no DHEC. There were no daily government briefings. The most that my father got was the doctor from the, basically the county seat who came in and saw what he was doing and said, looked like he had it under control and he left. The government sent the military to seal off this region of the Ivory Coast. And this infection was allowed to run its course 
because the eyes of the government, because the lobby are of the lowest class, they were expendable. For those of you who don't know, meningitis is an infection and inflammation of the fluid and membranes surrounding the brain and spinal cord. Many of those infected die, and death occurs generally in two hours. Often those who survive are left with brain damage and lost, total loss of hearing. So in the hospital wards, patients went. When the patients filled the wards, they put patients on the verandas surrounding the hospital and drove nails into the window frames to hang the intravenous drugs. And when the veranda was full, they put people under the mango tree and hung the IV in the, uh, in the branches to take care of these folks. People would be brought to the clinic on bicycles and motorcycles, tied to the driver to hold a person up and keep them from falling off. Sometimes the person would be alive, and other times they wouldn't make it. Some patients perished, but together with five nurses, my father was able to save 80% of those he treated, which according to medical textbooks at the time was a better than the national average. So in a moment of crisis, with no other help, a sharecropper's son from rural South Carolina stepped in. He didn't do it for glory. He didn't do it for praise. He didn't do it for fame. He stepped in because he loved these people, and he loved them because they love him. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about his reward. My father is seated right there. Dad, if you don't mind, stand up. Thank you. As you can see, my father's no longer in his early 30s. He's now 81, and at least once a year he returns to our station in Dorpo. He sits in the same chair behind the same desk and drops back into the same language and sees about 100 patients a day. He's genuinely happy because in his heart he's home. But the best thing he does is he sends us pictures of he, himself, and those there that we know and grew up with. And there you see his reward. You see it in his face and you see it in the faces of those people because they love him and they accept him because when they needed him, he was there for them. I talked to my dad this week and he told me, he said, my life has been a long journey, but it's been worth every step. Now I know you're wondering how this applies to you. You're entering a world in which Winning is a zero-sum game, where compromise and tolerance are insults rather than attributes to be admired and emulated, when truth has lost its value, and where in order for one group to feel superior, they have to deny the history and contributions of other groups. When you leave Francis Mayor, whether you go into the classroom, the courtroom, the exam room, or the boardroom, carry love into that room with you. Love is the expression of one's humanity and from humanity springs compassion, empathy, kindness, forgiveness, and joy. These are the hallmarks of a person people will follow, will befriend, and will seek out. Now, I'm not suggesting you be weak, because love is neither weak nor is it easy. One of the strongest men I know is the president of this university and my friend Fred Carter. He is demanding of himself and those who work for him, but this Board of Trustees will support him. The administration and faculty will follow him because we all know at his core he loves us. And because out of his love flows his compassion, his empathy, his kindness, his forgiveness, his joy, and from time to time a good chewing out. <laughs> now, we can't all be like my father and save lives in Africa or Dr. Carter and lead a university. But in the places where we find ourselves daily, we can bring love and compassion, be em empathetic and kind and joyful. Take a chance to be the difference in someone's life. You never know, you may be the lifesaver, liter literally. And let me talk about your reward. Today, many of you and your families, of your family and friends are here to celebrate this achievement in your lives. 
They are here because they love you. This is why they sacrificed for you. This is why they went without so you could receive this diploma. Their investment in your degree from this university is grounded in their love for you. Today, I challenge you to make an opportunity to tell those family members and friends who sacrificed so you could reach this goal, that you love them and that you appreciate them. That simple display of humanity and expression of love will mean more to you and more to them than you, you really know. And I promise you'll see it in their faces and their eyes. Now, a degree from this university is earned A degree from this university is earned. There are no participation awards. When you cross this stage, you're gonna receive a diploma. And remember, you earned it, and no one can ever take it from you. Today, the only person that gets a degree for just showing up is me. So in closing, remember, we're not all in the same ship, but we're all in the same storm. Some of us are in yachts, and some of us are in John boats. And some of us are in the water holding on to a log by our fingertips. But remember that your love may make the difference between someone sinking and someone swimming. In life, when the devil comes to you in your weakest moment and he whispers to you, today you cannot stand the storm. Remember, you're loved by your family, you're loved by your friends, and you're loved by this university. And in that love, find the strength to tell the devil, today, I am the storm. Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. I wish you Godspeed. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Before we begin the conferral of the degrees this morning, I would like to announce that honor medallions will be presented to those graduating with university honors during the distribution and undergraduate degrees by Dr. John Tuttle, Director of the Honors Program. And now I call upon the President of the University to come forward. Will the candidates for specialist, masters, and bachelor's degrees please rise? Mr. President, I am pleased to present these candidates for their respective degrees. Each candidate has completed the required course of study and each has been approved by the faculty. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the faculty of Francis Marion University, I confer upon you your respective degrees. Congratulations. I wish to ask Dr. Will Carswell, Associate Provo Provost, and Mrs. Ann Williams, Registrar, to come forward to assist in the presentation of diplomas for the graduate degrees. Will the graduates come forward to receive their diplomas? Specialist in School Psychology degree, Liana Britton Jacobs.
Courtney Porter Long, Julie K. Macker, Megan McGrath Marriott, Chandler Eden McIntyre, Julia McClaus, Master of Education degree, Daisy Bejarano Garavito, Audrey Lee Cathcart, Tawana Latrice Collins, Titus Marquell Eccles, Kayla Marie Geist, Lineal Javier Gonzalez, Melissa Lawrence, Anna Mason Poston, Jordan Welch Ray, Sarah McFadden Smith, Gladys Charlene Thompson, Natalia Corey Ward, <laughs> Master of Arts in Teaching degree, Lindsay K. Bissett. Delisa Shakim Davis, Michelle Brooke Moore Diaz, Deidre Deanna Hawkins Frazier, Jordan Elizabeth Kiefer. Raina Samira Middleton, Latoya Shonette Stanley, Master of Speech Language Pathology degree, Elizabeth Chelsea Armenteros, Callie Newman Barrett, Haley Bates Beasley. Sarah E. Brancho, Sarah Elizabeth Carney, Cassidy Logan Crowder, Alexandria Diaz, Megan Alexandria Gore, Devin Leanne Hamilton, Summer Reed Hamlet, Taylor Bowen Harrington, Renesha Namira Hopkins. Jerusha Johnson, Caitlin Hedrick Jones, Bailey Rose Matthews, Natasha Alexandra McKnight, Frangeras Mercado. Carlene Elizabeth Moore, Summer Lee Pittman, Ariel Jaquela Pridgen, Taylor Salimbo Pollock, Taya Simone Stepney McNair. 
Joan Hannah Stone. Lauren Ashley Walters. Amanda Brooke Watson. Ashley Mildred Watts. Master of Business Administration degree, Mary Bryant Bramlett. Jesse Robles Cruz II. Emily Evans Gibson. Buck Wilson Graham, Jr. Mark Patrick Kelly. Cameron Cox Packett. Ryan Patambar Singh. Eleanor Raina Ray. At this time, we present the candidates for the undergraduate degrees. I'll ask Dr. Alyssa Waters, Vice President for Enrollment Management, to come forward to assist in the presentation of the diplomas for the undergraduate degrees. The graduates are forward. College of Liberal Arts, Bachelor of General Studies, Tabrasia Arbriana Nesbitt. Andrew Michael Nutter. Mia Judith Whistler. Bachelor of Science, Beyonce Kiera Alexia Andrews. Jacob Lee Ballington, summa cum laude. Jenna Ryan Barano, cum laude. Aiden Barrett Barker, summa cum laude. Kimberly Michelle Baskins. Ronald Garrett Benton. Jonathan Caleb Bogues. <laughs> Dialan Cordarius Bulware. <laughs> Brianna Cheyenne Bradley, summa cum laude. Mark Samuel Britt, summa cum laude. Peyton Lewis Britt. Tyler Louise Brown, summa cum laude. Gabriel Brunson. Trayvon D. Chappelle. Caleb Merthyn Clark, magna cum laude. Kendrell Alonzo Cooper. Corey Lachelle Cooper. James O'Neill Creel III, cum laude with university honors. Pierce Merritt Curtis. Mary Grace Davis. Strange Davis. McKenna Lee Davis, magna cum laude. Rachel Lynn Davis, magna cum laude. (laughs) 
Dwelika Brianna Hydasia Dickey. Tylee Zainel Dixon. Giselle Dominguez Toledo. McKenna Elizabeth Dinan Summa Cum Laude. Adrian Monique Ellerby. Andrea Monet Ellerby. Caroline Alexis Floyd. Madison Denise Floyd Magna Cum Laude. Sean Patrick Floyd. Abigail Marie Fosberry. Tanika Chabelle Gauze. Scarlett Patton Gilmore. Marlon Gonzalez. Abigail Morgan Graham Cum Laude. Analina Jacqueline Griffin, Cum Laude with University Honors. James Wesley Hanna Cum Laude. Vince Javon Hanna. Piper Reed Hartley. Stephen Michael Helmig. Ariana Nicole Henry Magna Cum Laude. Nick Thomas Hill. Tasha Ariel Hill. Markel Devon Hines. Hannah Grace Horton. John Wesley Howard. Tyreek Antoine Hudson. Troy Draven James. Angelina Sheila Catherine Jayapuram, summa cum laude with University Honors. Maitland Marie Johnson. Faraji Franklin Sadiq Jones. Heidi Noel Jones. Andrew Gary Jordan. Stanislaw Konsavich Cum Laude. Danielle Leanne Carrickson. Jonathan Bailey Kyler. Zacchaeus Leon Lampley. (laughs) 
Jakira Kaya Lewis. Joey Rose Mabbitt. Megan Elizabeth Matzel. Caitlin Renee Matthews, cum laude. Raina Chardrice McCullough, magna cum laude with university honors. Emery Christine McCutcheon, summa cum laude. Kimberlyn Gabrielle McDowell. Curtis Johnson McLaurin. Jalen Tyshawn Miles. Aquarius Alante Miller. Garrett Stephen Miller, cum laude. Kaylee Page Miller, cum laude. Michaela L. Miller, magna cum laude. Andrew Dean Moore. Joshua L. Nettles. Madison Christina Norton. Adam Douglas Nunnally. Riley May Osborne, magna cum laude. Sydney Dawn Patterson. Gabriella Christine Perla, magna cum laude. Clayton Foster Rains, cum laude. Holden Randall Roberts. Christine Teresa Sawyer. Francis Elaine Singletary, cum laude. Olivia Gamble Smith. Marissa Stackley. Camilla Tempest Struther. Cassidy Faith Tanner, summa cum laude. David Mark Taylor, Jr. Grace Lee Walker. Tierra Deshea Walker, magna cum laude. Morgan Olivia Warner. Amber Cassidy Webb. Amaya Simone Wilder. Gerard Lewis Woodland, magna cum laude. Quasha Woods. Tavora Sinretta Anise Brown. Sapphire Angelique Campbell, cum laude. 
Shaughnessy Abretta Carter. Jessica Brian Davis. Zachary C. Davis. Chanel Hanbury Magna Cum Laude. Darius Xavier Hicks Terrell Jr. Shamanya Jackson. Ethan Mitchell King, magna cum laude with university honors. Savannah Grace Luter, cum laude. Brianna Ashton Lizenby, magna cum laude. Tyrell Lakidrell Mack. You got it. Jamika Margarita Michelle McCullum. Ashton Michael Mixon. Sarah Dawn Pascal Cum Laude. Victoria Louisa Rogers. Ada Reed Smolin Morton, summa cum laude with university honors. Ian Malachi Spivey. August Stelzer Cum Laude. Mace Talbot Cum Laude. Grayson Elizabeth Watts. Tiana Renee Wheeler. Deandra Linetta Williams. School of Business, Bachelor of Business Administration, Andrew Thomas Alexander, magna cum laude. John Davis Burroughs. Summer Calhoun. John Anderson Castro Rodriguez. Asante Amari Chong Turner. Damon Brandon Cook. Dalton Collins Corsi. Kelsey Lee Darian. Cassandra Michelle Edgman Cum Laude. Noah Amos Allen Filial. Cameron Frankham.
Carter Michael Ginarelli. Ian Sean Michael Grant. Connor Bryce Johnson. Saba Kaladze. Jordan Christopher King. Caleb Nathaniel Kleiss. Andrew Thomas Lowry Cum Laude. Felicity Valencia Lucas. Sydney Ibria Mack. Julie Martin Sova. Taylor Matthews Magna Cum Laude. Hunter Owen McGee Cum Laude. Michaela Deshonda McClellan. Austin Carl Moore. Tierra Lachey Mumford. Jada Sharnice Pearson. Samantha Ramirez. Gracelyn E. Rast. Dalton James Ramey. Valentino Restrepo Bettenker. Palmer Cole Richburg. Lauren T. Rowell. Labricia Monet Samuels. Alexander Schulze Magna Cum Laude. Jacob Lee Schwartz Magna Cum Laude. Grant Thomas Sellers. Ashley Nicole Sims. Christopher Gregory Snipes. Connor Allen Stokes. DeKelvin D. Stokes. Ryan Alexander Taylor, cum laude. Mary Colette Versless. Matthew Thomas Young. Bachelor of Science, Daniel, Car Daniel Carl Dixon II, cum laude. Noah Ashton Kimmerlin.
Michael Tillery Knight II. Tanner Lee Poston. Hunter Lynch Singletary. Roland Vu Magna Cum Laude. School of Education, Bachelor of Science, Catherine Elizabeth Ackerman Cum Laude. Christopher James Boone, magna cum laude. Sarah Rose Driggers, summa cum laude with university honors. Jessica Danielle Harkless. Sophia Latrice Izzard. Brianna Nicole Johnson. Caroline Lee McClam, summa cum laude. Danny Reed Marie McKenzie, summa cum laude. Abby Elizabeth McLean, summa cum laude. Elizabeth Ashley Moen. Ariel Diasia Brie Peoples, magna cum laude. Peyton Rose Russo, summa cum laude. Jerrica Rashawn Sinkler. Whitley, Whitley Autumn Turner, summa cum laude. Gisela Jasmine Vasquez, summa cum laude. School of Health Sciences, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Felicity James Allen, cum laude. Hannah Marissa Atkinson. Douglas A. Bryan. Mark Calcutt Butler. Madison Ruth Caudill. Adaides Orapesa Calkins. Cole Jacobs Chestnut Cum Laude. Madison Haley Cook. Brooklyn Elizabeth Cox, Magna Cum Laude. Stasia Key Essence Dozier. Jessica Nayeli Figueroa Perez. Edith Flores, cum laude. Skylar Ann Graham. Maya Marie Garesso. Anna Louise Guerrero.
Courtney Lee Hare. Luke David Hall. Cameron Yvonne Harris, magna cum laude. Neptali Herrera Ochoa. Tyasia Hunter. Tiana Selena Lyles. Madison Ann Lynch. Jenna Hyman Mims. Savannah Dean Mincy Cum Laude. Macy Nicole Moore. Elizabeth Outler. Nana Oma Owusu Bonsu. Madison Michelle Phipps. Ashanti Audrey Rucker. Hannah Norris Skipper. Bachelor of Science, Vincent Trajan Allen. Nyquanda Alston. Lakayla Bethay McCray. Tiana Charnay Cohen Cum Laude. Lamani Marie Courtney. Gabrielle Nicole Cullifer. Alexis Michaela Cumby. Jamia Amani Downing. Michaela Joyce Dwyer. Sharika Ellerson. Abigail Lee Floyd, magna cum laude. Erica Imani Shade Frierson. Tatiana Aliyah Shea Graham. Alexis Adriana Herring. Brianna Lee Jackson. Katie Sue Kasaya. Emily Diane McCutcheon. Brianna O'Shea Milton. Mary Frances Moore. K. 
Katie Frances Morris. Deja Diana Nasheed. John Benedict Odasco Cum Laude with University Honors. Leah Shanice Pegues. Jasmine Alexia Tanay Rogers. Kichina Russ. Typriel Simon. Viana N. Sinkler. Jasmine Stanley. Madison Danielle Todd. Jasmine G. Torres. Janie Susan Wagner. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of spring 2023. To the members of the audience, for reasons of courtesy and safety, we ask that you remain seated until the academic procession and all the graduates have recessed. Now, as we conclude, a university is only as good as its faculty, and Francis Marion University is fortunate to have an outstanding faculty. Graduates, please rise, face the faculty, and thank them for all they have done. You also have family and friends here today. Graduates, please thank them for all of their many years of support. And, and now to give the benediction, Bishop Donald Jackson. Now may the grace of our God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. May he dispatch his heavenly angels to give us traveling mercy. The Lord bless you. The Lord smile upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. In your name, amen. This concludes our spring 2023 commencement. Please remain seated until all of the graduates have recessed.
Thank you.